I just want to say, I have been meeting, I've never actually met Lisa in person. I tried for like a very long time since January to connect with her in person, but we kept passing each other like ships in the night, no matter where we were in the United States. And so finally, I got to meet her in person. I've been following her ministry for a long time and keeping up with her book. She's an incredible author and really knows how to speak to the feminine heart in a very unique way. She's had two books, I think two, have hit the New York Times bestseller list. Okay. We are so used to hearing New York Times bestseller that we just go, New York Times. I just found out it is a, it's very hard to do that. I didn't realize, I mean, we know that. I don't know if I'm like an idiot because I'm trying to publish a book right now. And I'm like, it's hard to get on the New York Times best. That's a huge deal, y'all. Huge deal. Huge deal. But more than that, more than that, she really does. She loves ministering to women. She's got an incredible way of speaking to their hearts and touching the feminine soul. And I know that she's got a great word for us. I love her already. I know that you're going to love her. So would you just help me by standing to your feet and giving the very best welcome you can to Lisa Turkhurst. Well, thank you. Have a seat. I'm so excited to be here. I'm actually a native Floridian. Um, grew up in Tallahassee, Florida, so not too far from here. And uh, my in-laws live in St. Augustine. So lots of family connections down here. But I really do feel like I have met a true sister in Carrie. So Carrie, it's such an honor to be here. I bring warm greetings from my home church, Elevation Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. I have the wonderful privilege of sitting under the teaching of Pastor Stephen Furtick and had just, oh yeah, you guys love him too, yeah. Pastor Stephen and Holly are good friends of mine, and uh, really the first time I didn't get to meet Carrie, I saw Carrie at Code Orange Revival this year, where this pastor you may have heard of, Pastor Stovall Weems was there, yeah! And uh, we all absolutely love Pastor Stovall and Carrie at Elevation. I also bring greetings from Proverbs 31 Ministries, that's where, yes! Thank you. That's where I serve as president. And uh, I have one of my amazing partners in ministry with me, Leah. Would you just raise your hand, Leah? This is Leah. I get to work with Leah every day, and it's such a privilege. So tonight we want to talk about this wonderful topic that may relate to how you're feeling as the holidays approach. And uh, that wonderful time where we celebrate Jesus, but it's also a time where you get to spend lots of of concentrated, interactive time with people you're forced to call family because you don't have a choice, and um, you love your family so much, but sometimes when you spend lots and lots and lots of time in high-stress situations with these people we call family, we love them, but sometimes we may not feel like we like them. And so there's this little thing that can happen every now and then. It's called conflict. Oh, isn't that so fun? And so let me just ask a question. Who in here has ever had at least one conflict ever in your entire life? Just raise your hand. <gasps> yes, that's so wonderful because that means this applies to pretty much everyone. Now, before we get started with the message tonight, I want to tell you we're going to be in Proverbs, and, and uh, we're going to just have four verses in this message. It's a very, very simple message, but I think if we could remember these four verses that I'm going to be sharing in Proverbs, then I think not only will our holidays go better, but I think we will have less unglued situations, less conflict in our life. So the first verse that we're going to be in is Proverbs chapter 10. Now, if you uh, don't know where Proverbs chapter 10 is, I don't want you to have that feeling. I've had that feeling before, sitting in church, and the pastor says, turn to first Zuma Zing Isaiah, and, um, and I, I don't know where that is, and it makes me sweat, and that's a very uncomfortable feeling in church. So there's this wonderful place at the beginning of your Bible. It's called the Table of Contents, and I want you to look at your neighbor, and I want you to say something. There is no shame, there is no shame in turning to the Table of Contents. Okay, so when you go to the table of contents, you're going to see at the very top, 
And it's right at the very beginning, table of contents, Old Testament. And this is how it goes. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, these are all books. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms. And then we're very, very close to Proverbs. And Proverbs 10 in my Bible is on page 535. So if you have the same Bible as me, that's a wonderful thing. I also want to let you know that uh, we're going to have a, a few rules. And so here's what we're going to do. I want you to look at whoever you came with tonight. Just pick one person. If you came by yourself, just pick your neighbor. And I want you to repeat this after me. This message is for me. I will not use it against you. Okay, that's really, really good. That's super important. Okay, now pick one other person. We're going to do it one more time. Pick one other person you came with or someone you're sitting near. Ready? Repeat after me. This message is for me, but you need it more. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> no, this message is for me. I will not use it against you. Okay, awesome. We've got our ground rules. We've got our verse. And... Now we are going to talk about unglued, this feeling that we have when conflict occurs. You see, conflict always has emotion tied to it in some way. And when we're in a conflict and the emotions or the feelings come, feelings don't sit still very well. They move. And they're either going to be moving up and out of our mouth and create a little chaos externally in times of conflict, or feelings can get pushed down and create chaos internally. And usually either that external chaos or that internal chaos is what makes conflict so hard. Tonight we're going to learn four different reactions that we can have in times of conflict and how to have a better reaction depending on which reaction type you relate to. And here's what makes this so complicated. I switch my reaction in times of conflict based on who I'm having a conflict with. So I will have a different type of reaction with my children than I will with my pastor. I will have a totally different reaction with my mom than I will with a friend. And that's what makes this all so complicated. Conflict occurs when one of two things happens. Either we feel exposed or opposed. If we ever feel exposed or opposed, you can pretty much guarantee some type of conflict will bubble to the surface. You see, we don't like to have our insecurities, our vulnerabilities, and our inadequacies exposed. And when someone threatens to expose us in that way, conflict can occur. We also don't like people to oppose us because we want what we want, when we want it, how we want it, and when we don't get that, conflict can occur. My mom called me several months ago, and she said, you are never going to believe what has happened. And I thought to myself, hmm, I'll believe it. I'll believe whatever you have to say, Mom. And she said, Lisa, did you know that your iPad can ring like a phone? I said, do you mean your iPhone? She said, no, I mean your iPad. And I said, no, I, I, I did not know your iPad could ring like your iPhone. She said, well, I didn't either. And my iPad was laying on the bed, and I was, I was packing, getting ready to go on a trip one day, and all of a sudden, my iPad started ringing. And I said, well, what did you do? And Mom said, well, I walked over, and I looked at it, and I thought, I should answer this. <laughs> and so I took my finger and I slid the little button over that looked just like my phone. And all of a sudden, there was this doctor's face, this doctor that she works with. He was just right there. And she got so excited that she could see him and, and that he was calling her. So she just launched right into this long list of things that she'd been meaning to tell him but just hadn't had the chance yet. 
Now, here's an important fact to note about my mom. You see, sometimes when I'm on the phone with my mom, um, and, and you guys are, well, we're friends now that we're at a sisterhood event together, right? And so if I tell you this, you're not going to tell her, right? Right. Okay, good. So sometimes I'll be on the phone, and I'll get that little beep, like the call waiting beep. And it's impossible for me to tell my mom to hold on a second because she's just going and going and going and going and going. And I know when she gets going, like I can gauge how much longer she has. And it's usually like a long stretch. And I'll try like, mom, mom, Hank, mom, Hank, mom, 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 Hank. And, and, and she's just not, she's not going to stop. And so I can click over to the other line <laughs> and I can have a quick little conversation and click back over and she's still going and going, okay? Okay. 